Hi, welcome to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Larissa and this is my first video for my channel. Um, I'll do a little introduction a little bit later about what my channel will be all about, what you can expect. Uh, but today, because the video is about bread making, I will just get right into that and then we'll have a little introduction chit chat later. So um, get cozy, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea. It's a cold day today here in Newfoundland and there's snow on the ground and uh, it's nice to be inside with a warm house, a warm oven and soon the smell of bread. So let's get started. Uh, I'll just show you my ingredients but first I just want to say that this bread recipe was my nan's bread recipe. She was born and raised in Newfoundland. In a small town, she raised 15, I think 15 children. My dad was the youngest of the 15 children. And she baked bread every day and twice on Saturday. So she was a very small woman, but she was always very strong. And I was terrified of her hugs because <laughs> I thought she would just break me in half, but that's probably because of the bread making. Her arms were so strong. Um, she was the most loving woman, very caring, uh, and fed her family very well. And so this bread recipe is tried and true. My family, my, sis, my aunties uh, still use this recipe, um, the ones that make bread. So uh, I really wanted to learn. My mother taught me. She learned from her sister-in-law, uh, one of my aunties, and my mother taught me last year how to make this bread. So I've been learning for about a year now how to make this bread <laughs> and it did take a little while to get used to it. I'll tell you a funny story. I did make a batch of bread and I gave one to my client's uh, husband and the family and not realizing that it was completely raw in the middle. So that was closer to the beginning of my bread making. Thank the Lord. I have come a long way from then and it's been about a year. So hopefully today it works out and uh, we get a good batch of bread loaves today. I'll do one loaf, one style of loaves where it's just kind of the plain roll up uh, white bread and then I'll do a Newfoundland style which I was taught is just the three lump loaf. Um, I don't know why they do that. I've asked some local Newfoundlanders why they have the three lump loaf. So if you know, please comment down below and and let me know. I'd love to, to hear why that, that happens. Um, and so I, one of my theories is that because Newfoundland has a lot of fishing towns and the men would go out fishing and go out to work, they would rip off a piece of the loaf so that they didn't have to take a whole loaf for their lunch or I guess in Newfoundland they call it dinner so don't get that confused. <laughs> um, anyway so I'll start off with the ingredients of the bread. So here I have my robin flour. Um, I will use up this container of flour that I have. It uses 16 cups of flour for this recipe. I don't usually buy robin hood flour. It's the most expensive at the grocery stores around here but um, it was on sale for a great price, less than the no-name brand or store brand. So I did pick up a couple bags of this because I go through them quite regularly making this bread. 16 cups of flour <laughs> for the recipe. So you can imagine how fast that goes. So I've got my bread here. I've got my Fleischmann's. I don't know how you pronounce that. Fleischmann's traditional active dry yeast. I don't know if you can use the quick yeast. I, I wouldn't for this recipe because I've never tried it and um, I don't know. So that's just the one that I use. I buy the big one because I go through it pretty quickly. I like to make buns as well and, and things like that and pizza dough, uh, pizza crust. So I go through that quite often. I did have to run to the market close by and, and grab one of these. They didn't have the bigger one and I needed more yeast, so I just had to grab the little the little baby one. So 
that will give us enough for today because I don't think I have enough in my other one. I always try to buy my butter uh, on sale and so I stock them in my freezer downstairs. So what I'll do the night before I make bread um, or the morning before if you're making it in the evening is I'll pull that out of the freezer and I'll put it on the counter to get it room temperature so it's easier to cut into. And the recipe uses half a cup of unsalted butter. Um, I know you can use margarine. So if I know things are really tight right now and margarine probably would be the cheaper option. Um, but health wise and because it only takes half a cup of butter, I've opted for just just doing the butter. I think it is healthier, but I have used the margarine, um, you know, when the grocery budget needs to stretch a little bit more. So it does work out fine if you use half a cup of margarine. So that's up to you. And then it uses eight teaspoons of salt. So you have eight teaspoons of salt and then you have your half a cup of melted butter. You want to melt it fully. You don't want to have any clumps of butter in your in your mix. So make sure that you melt it fully. And then you'll pour in your liquid ingredients, which will be the half a cup of butter, five and a half cups of warm water, and your yeast mixture, which will go through um, right away. So you want to put those all together in the tub or whatever bin you have, uh, whatever bowl you have. Uh, just make sure it's big because you're going to be surprised how big the dough ball is and then it has to rise to be double that size. So you want to make sure that you have something big enough um, to withstand that. I got this at uh, kind of like a um, multi-purpose store for about $8.00. I probably paid a bit much for that. I went to Dollarama to the dollar store and they didn't have anything that size at the time. But a few weeks later, they did get some in for about half the price of what I paid. So anyways, I needed it right away. So I got it and it is really sturdy and a good, uh, a good bin for my bread. So we're gonna we're gonna now do our yeast mixture. So what I do first of all is I warm it with hot water in the sink. The reason why you want to do that is because these bowls can get really cold, and you want to have warm water in your yeast mixture, which is the first purpose of using this bowl. We're gonna do the yeast mixture in here, and so you want to have this bowl hot. So now that I've rinsed this bowl in hot water, it's going to be warmer so that the warm water that I put in doesn't turn cold immediately. So right away now, we're gonna measure out one and a half cups of warm water and put it into this bowl for our yeast mixture. one and a half cups of warm water into our bowl for the yeast mixture. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to put uh, two tablespoons, let me check that. I wanna check my recipe because it's been a few weeks. Two tablespoons of sugar. And what the sugar does is the sugar helps activate the yeast. So after I put the sugar in, I'll just give it a bit of a stir. And 
and then we do the the yeast next and so on the back of the yeast it'll tell you how much one packet is worth if you buy the single packets you want three packets of yeast in here um, but because we're just doing it from the jar we're going to do six and three quarter teaspoons so I'm going to get all that in there So here is our yeast mixture and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with a cloth and I got these really nice um, kitchen cloths from Dollarama and they were really cheap and I bought a bunch of them for uh, my bread making because they're really good for covering your loaves and your yeast so that it can rise. So this is going to go over I'm going to put it into the oven which I have the light on so my yeast mixture is just going to pop into the oven there I'm going to close it the oven is not on just the light is on so now that our yeast is rising we're going to put in all of our ingredients for our bread and I'm just going to do the dry ingredients right away because we're going to let that yeast mixture rise I think it's about 10 minutes um, depending so it, it's a bit cold today so it might be a little bit longer than that but that way if we have our dry ingredients in here as soon as the yeast mixture is ready we can just throw in our our wet ingredients and and get to work I have my four cup measuring cup this is amazing for when you're doing bread because I used to have one of the smaller plastic ones and it kept breaking on me because of the weight of the flour and so I invested in these really good glass measuring uh, cups here and no regrets, they've been amazing. So you do four, we're going to do four of these. So we put our first one in already, now we're going to do our second. I think I buried my plastic. I buried my plastic measuring cup that I helped scoop my flour out. Oh well. Not the first time that's happened. Okay, now I'm gonna get a teaspoon and we're gonna measure out eight teaspoons of salt in our flour. So you can measure them out more uh, particularly, but I just, this is how my mom taught me to do it. And you just take your teaspoon, take your salt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's our eight teaspoons of salt. Then we need half a cup of sugar, white sugar. 
So we're going to put that in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna give that a quick mix with a, just with a fork, I guess. Just mix up the dry ingredients. Okay. Let me check the recipe and make sure that we got all of our dry ingredients in the right place. 16 cups of flour, eight teaspoons of salt, half a cup of sugar, and then our wet ingredients, our butter, our water, and our yeast mixture. Perfect. for puppy. So we'll put in our butter mixture. That's half a cup of melted butter. We'll put in our yeast mixture. And then we're going to pour in a bowl full, which is about five and a half cups of warm water. Now it's ready to mix. And I just start mixing it with a wooden spoon. Oh, and before I forget, you never want to have rings on <laughs> or nail polish. Don't wear nail polish when you're kneading your dough. You will have nail polish in your dough. Yes, I learned that the hard way. I know the angle's not very good, but I'll show you the consistency as we go along. So right now I'm just mixing it all together so that we can form a nice ball of dough so that it's easy to roll out onto the counter so that we can knead it.
So it's starting to get there pretty close. I just want to make sure all the flour on the bottom and the sides is mixed into the, uh, the dough. This is why my grandmother had such strong arms. <laughs> Not only kneading it, but mixing it is a lot of work. Okay, so that's probably about ready for me to roll out onto the counter on a lightly floured surface. So I'm just gonna wash my hands quick because we're gonna get our hands into the dough and I wanna have fresh, clean hands before we start uh, mixing that with our hands. And another thing that you wanna have ready for when you're mixing your dough together is a cup. You can have a cup, you can have a bowl. I just use the measuring cup that I use to measure the flour so that I'm not dirtying another cup. And you wanna just fill that up a little bit so that you have enough flour to add to your dough because I find that I buried my little cup that I used to help measure out so I'm just gonna use another one uh, anyways I find that the dough is often a little bit wet so you have to add a little bit more flour um, I used to add quite a bit of flour now I've gotten used to kneading it and I don't add as much flour but I'll probably fill up maybe four cups I probably won't use all that but that way you have it it's better to have it on hand so you're not your hands are going to be really dirty with uh, dough or not dirty but you know what I mean full of dough so you're not going to have the ability to go into the cupboard and all your containers and bags dirty Sticky with dough. Already you can see how big that is. I'm gonna get rid of this bin so it's not in the way. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a timer for 10 minutes. I actually set my timer usually for 11 minutes because it takes me about a minute to gather everything up and to just get a handle on my dough. So one thing that I learned about rolling out your dough and all that is you are gonna get it, it's gonna be really wet and sticky and it's gonna get all over your hands um, and you'll be tempted to keep adding more flour, but don't because it will sort itself out. Now, there is a point where, you know, at the beginning I do add more flour because it does need it, but there is a point where you can add too much flour and I just, I just say of what I've learned is just get okay with being uncomfortable with the stickiness or the wet dough because the more you knead it, the more that's gonna sort itself out. So you're gonna start kneading this now for 10 minutes. So it's starting to get, now that the dough is kinda, or the flour is kinda getting worked in, um, it's starting to get pretty sticky. It's 
not as sticky as it usually is though, so I'm not sure. So your hands are going to be sticky. But just work through it. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling the dough back onto itself and kneading it in. This creates really nice um, airy bread. You'll get the nice holes in your bread. You want to make sure that you're getting your hands really into it. Don't be too soft on it because it needs to be kneaded more aggressively than I thought when I first started. <laughs> and maybe that was just me building up my muscles, but I went a little bit too soft on it at the beginning and it does need a bit more effort, a bit more, gotta put your back into it. So as you can see, I haven't actually had to add any more flour yet, which is pretty great. And I think it's just maybe this, um, this dough. Sometimes it depends on the weather. It depends on how hot or cold your house is. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> But this dough is not requiring any more flour. And you saw how sticky my hands were and full of dough when I first started. I'm only about six minutes in and I haven't added any more flour. And it's starting to, the dough is starting to go back into the dough ball rather than on my hands. And it's pulling apart nicely from the counter it's not as sticky on the counter. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Three more minutes. Don't get too discouraged. You can be flexible when you're making your bread. Just kind of, you'll get, it's experience that will give you the knowledge of when your, your dough has enough flour. I'm still getting used to it. So I've come a long way, but there's still areas I can improve. And if you're an avid bread maker and you've got any um, secrets or tips or tricks that you can share, can you comment down below? And I would love to see those. I'm always asking people for bread making tips, you know, how to knead it, any other tips and tricks to make it the best that you can do. Because you're spending a lot, I mean the flour is probably the biggest expense, you're using a lot of flour, you're using a lot of time and effort, as you can see this takes a lot of energy, as you can hear in my breath. <laughs> It's a workout so you don't really you know the more tips and stuff that can help you learn from other people's mistakes the better yours is going to turn out you don't have to make the mistakes that other people did <clears throat> another thing is um, some people will make their house really really warm for bread making day and I think that's what my Nan did. I think my dad said that she had the house really warm when she was making bread. She made it every day. So I mean in the morning is probably when she made it and she would have the house really toasty warm for her bread making. And so I used to do that. I used to turn every single heater on. I used to start the oven, leave the door open, and I thought this is just a massive amount of energy because the whole bread making process takes about four hours. Oh, there's our timer. There. So the whole bread making process takes about four hours. So instead of that, now I can let my bread rise in 
my oven just with the light on. Not the oven on, just the light on. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know. Like I said, I'm learning. I think that's gonna be really great. So I'm gonna get our blue bin back. This is gonna go into the blue bin. We're gonna cover it and put it in the oven for an hour and a half. The oven is off, but the light is on. So now that our dough is rising, we're gonna let it rise for an hour and a half. So I'm gonna set the timer on the stove for an hour and a half. There we go. So that it's kind of nice because it gives you an hour and a half to get your kitchen cleaned up because you've got flour all over the place, you've got your ingredients out, you wanna clean up and make it nice and clean. Maybe get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, a cup of ice water because I just did a workout. <laughs> Seriously, kneading dough is a workout. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Okay, so our timer went off when we were doing the pans. So we're gonna open our oven and we're gonna take a look at our dough and see how big it's got. Check that out. That looks beautiful. And like I said, I didn't have my oven on. I just had the light on and you can feel it. It's warm, but it's not hot. So it's not baking. Our dough looks really nice. It's really big. It's definitely doubled in size from what we put uh, in the oven. And so now we're just gonna punch it down, push it down. Little air bubbles are gonna come out, you can see. You just want to push it, push those air bubbles out. All right. So what I like to do, I do always have some flour beside me. Just in case I need to, um, just in case the dough is really sticky. Sometimes it's really sticky and you need to uh, flour your hands or the surface or whatever. So I think this dough is all right, so I might not have to worry about that. Uh, so what we'll do first is we'll do um, just a regular loaf. And so I might have to go in a couple times to get enough, but I just grab it, grab the dough, get a nice fistful, and I just use a knife to cut it off. So you'll end with that might not be enough. I might need a little bit more. So that should be nice. That's going to be a nice loaf. So I just kind of get that dough into a bit of a flat piece of dough. And then I'm just going to roll it on the, on the counter here. So this is where you might need some flour, but this dough is actually really nice to work with. It's not too sticky. So then you're just going to roll it into... A loaf and guys mine are not very pretty they're not like completely uniform and then I just tuck in the corners here so it's not it doesn't look all weird okay and then you just kind of with your with your fingers you can just kind of make sure that the bottom is nice and put together and then you're gonna put it in your loaf pan there you go. So that's our first one. So that's just your regular loaf. And right away, I'm gonna cover it with our 
cloths. So I'm just gonna put these over on the stove top to start to rise. They have to rise for half an hour. So I'm gonna work at the rest of these loaf pans and I'll show you the three lump Newfoundland style. But while I'm doing that, I want my bread to be covered. I want my dough to be covered. Okay, so now we're gonna do the next style, which is the Newfoundland three lump loaf. So this time I'm only gonna make one of those because I would I just wanna show you what it's like, but for some reason for my bread, when I make the three lump loaf, I end up using a lot more dough. I don't know if that's normal or what, but um, basically the three lump loaf, you're just gonna get, it'll just take time to figure out how big your lumps are supposed to be. And so for one lump, I probably use this much, probably that much. And then you just wanna fold it to the bottom, pinch them to the bottom, oops. And then what I do is with my palm of my hands and the, and the corner of my, my hand, I just kind of push them together, push the bottoms together. You can do it on the, on the countertop. I'll show you that. You can just go like this just kind of guide the dough with your hand. I've seen people do that. I don't, I just do it with my hand. You can do whatever works better for you. So that's one lump. So we're gonna put that into our pan and we're gonna work on our next one. I definitely think that the three lump loaf bread looks nicer. It just looks a lot fuller and fluffier. Um, I don't know, it's just nice. So there's our second loaf, put that in the middle, squish them together, and now we need one more. So I probably overestimated how much uh, dough I needed for those, for the bottom one at least. But anyways, they're not gonna be perfect, but they are what they are. So that's the three lump loaf Newfoundland style bread. Um, so we're gonna get that underneath a towel. And let's have a look. We've got this much left. I do want some cheese buns, because those are my favorite, I think we'll be fine. So I think we're gonna get one more regular size bread loaf. That is not cutting, there we go. One regular size bread loaf might be on the small end. And then we'll get some nice cheese buns. That's exciting. Oh, I should mention, so at this time, when you're done rolling out your um, loaves into the pans, you want to start your oven at 350 so that these have to rise for 30 minutes in the pans so overall you have to let your dough rise twice once for an hour and a half in your in your bowl or tub and once when your dough is rolled into your pans so the second rising is only going to be 30 minutes so while that 30 minutes is happening you can get your oven preheated to 350 then you're just whoops <laughs> then you're just not wasting your time all right that's a little bit stubby make that a bit longer there that's gonna look nice now we can do our cheese buns so the, the cheese buns, I'll say, I'll say the times again, but the bread loaves, 
bake for 40 minutes at 350. Now I think that might depend on your oven because I'm pretty sure when my mom does it, she only has to bake them for 30 minutes. Her oven might be a bit hotter than mine and my house is pretty cold in, in our winters. So that could be it as well. So it's not a hard and fast rule that it's 40 minutes at 350, but you can kind of decide what works for you. But these cheese buns, I only bake for 30 minutes. It is the perfect temperature for them. They bake beautifully. They're not overbaked, but they're not doughy. They're just, they're so, they're so good. They're so good. We had some family over last week or after Christmas, whenever that was. And with our supper, we served, that's another thing, supper. It's called supper here in Newfoundland. <laughs> Dinner is lunch. Supper is what we used to call dinner <laughs> in, in BC. So anyways, for our supper, we served some homemade bread rolls right out the oven. And guys, they're so, if you're making bread anyways, they are so simple to make. Um, if you're just doing, if you're doing the work of kneading the bread anyways, why not throw some, throw some dough in a pan for the rolls and you can have fresh rolls for your meal that night or the next day. They keep really well. Now I don't, oh, there goes my knife. Now I don't freeze my bun, the buns that I make. I've never tried to. I don't know if they would keep very well. But the bread, so if you bake the bread, you let the bread cool and all that will go through the steps. But if you bake your bread, you can get these bread bags. I just get them at our grocery store. I think I just get them at Walmart actually. Get them at Walmart and you get like a hundred bread bags and then twist ties or whatever. And then you can throw those, the bread loaves once they're fully baked and cooled, they have to be fully cooled. <laughs> Don't put hot bread into your freezer. Um, and so then you can freeze your bread and they freeze so well and they're delicious. Obviously nothing beats fresh out of the oven bread, but it's pretty close. It's pretty good. So we freeze our bread loaves and we take them out of the freezer as we need them throughout the week. But these are so easy. And then I'm just doing the same thing with my hands as I did with the bread loaves. You're just kind of like guiding the bottom, pushing it, like pinching it against your palm and rolling it. A lot of people do it against like a countertop where they'll kind of, I'm left-handed, sorry. I'm kind of covering what I'm doing, but if I try to do it with my right hand, I don't know if I could do that. So anyway, you're just kind of rolling it so that the bottom is not clumpy. And so you get the nice rise of the dough when it's rising and when it's baking. So I'm gonna set my timer now for 30 minutes. And I preheated the oven for 350 because not all of these are gonna get into the oven on the first go. I don't wanna overfill my oven. I haven't had good luck with that when I've put, I've tried to put everything in there on double racks. I don't do that anymore. I just put them all on the one uh, middle rack or the main rack. Anyways. So there we go. These are gonna be our little rolls. Those are gonna rise. So I'll show you here. These are the ones we did first and they're starting to rise already, which is great. I'll be quick because I wanna cover them back up again. That one looks like a little bean. Push him out a little bit. 
but those are looking really nice. That one's a bit rugged, but that's okay. So those are our six loaves of bread, our one Newfoundland style loaf, and our buns, 12 buns. So I'm gonna cover these back up. They're gonna rise, the oven is going to warm up, and one of the reasons why I put my loaves on the oven to rise is because when the oven is heating up, it kind of acts as a natural heat for the, um, the dough to rise again. So there we go. We're gonna wait for half an hour for those, for the oven to get ready and for them to rise, and we'll put them in. Well, as it happens, when I was turning off the timer the first time, I accidentally turned off the oven. So, the oven is not preheated. <laughs> so, the dough did rise, or the bread did rise, but we're gonna have to leave it until the oven is preheated. That might take maybe five minutes, not a big deal, but more of a nuisance that I had to get up and quit what I was doing to come deal with that, but that's okay. That happens, that's life in the kitchen. <laughs> My kitchen anyways. Okay, take two. The oven is preheated. So we're gonna get our bread loaves, the first batch into the oven so that they can start to bake. So we're gonna let that bake for 40 minutes because we don't have our cheese buns in. Those are the only things that require only 30 minutes. So we're gonna start the timer for 40. We've got them in there. And we'll check them when the timer goes off. Okay, our timer's going off for the first four loaves. So I'm moving these off to the side. Those are gonna go in as soon as the other ones come out. So I'll pull these out. Oh, nice. Those are nice. I'm happy with that. So we have our butter just done in the microwave and I've put the other loaves in the oven. There were two more and then our buns. So those are gonna bake now for 30 minutes for the buns and I think I might do four, 35 for the loaves because those are a little bit darker but they still look really nice. So we've got our melted butter here. We're gonna use this with our brush. And we're just gonna brush each loaf with a generous amount of butter. So all in all, I'd probably say that this recipe takes about a cup of butter. So that's with half a cup of butter is for the actual dough and then you kind of split the difference between the rest of the, the cup of butter by buttering your pans to prepare for the dough and then the rest of it will go on top. And I think you still will have some butter left over. So that's not too bad. All of these loaves and, and buns and it's one cup of butter. That's not too bad.
So as soon as I finished putting the melted butter on top, I put them on cooling racks. So I don't leave them in the pans. I put them right on cooling racks after the butter. Those look amazing. See what the butter does? It really just like softens the crust. These ones are a little bit darker than usual, but it's so soft. Really nice. Now we got to get them right away onto our cooling racks. Oh my goodness, look at our bread loaves. So these were the ones that were in for just 35 minutes, or sorry, 30 minutes. And then, so those were the 30 minute ones, the rest were in for 40. Those ones probably needed 40 because they're quite large. But the little ones like that were fine for 30. And then these buns, I'm just gonna rip this open here. So these are fresh out of the oven you should let them sit but <laughs> I can't help myself look at that look at that that looks so good put some butter on that or like I'm used to some cheese whiz <laughs> oh we don't buy that stuff anymore but it's so good That is so beautiful. I was a little bit worried that it would be over baked, but I actually think because these loaves were a bit thicker, the 40 minutes was perfect. So yeah, it's really nice. Now, because I didn't make any uh, cheese buns, I just made regular buns. I'm going to make grilled cheese with fresh homemade bread. There's one. Oh, look at how soft that is. That is so soft. And airy. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's get good lighting here. So the buns, I couldn't resist. I had to cut into them. So what we have on top is some homemade partridge berry jam. So I'm gonna have a bite of our homemade buns with our homemade partridge berry jam. Oh my goodness. Partridge berries, a Newfoundland delicacy. <laughs> that is fantastic. Seriously, it is a lot of effort up front, but you know, after the kneading is done, it's pretty much just rolling the dough and waiting for it to bake, and then you get to enjoy this. Fantastic. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'd love to have you along for some more baking and homemaking and simple living. See you next time.